Hi all, Retro Tech Chris here again. So today I've got a real treat for you. We're gonna have a look at the Windows Sound System sound card and software. And doing research for this video, I found this cool PC Magazine article, Microsoft Sound System Gives Windows a Voice. How pithy and cute. And you can see the nice little screenshot there of all the different applications, which we will be taking a look at here in short order. And looking at the fact file on the right, you can see that the list price for this was $289. My goodness. And you needed 2 megabytes of RAM, 9 megabytes of hard disk space, Windows 3.1, and a 16-bit ISA slot. The Windows sound system did include some cool applications. We'll have a look at the installation process for those and the applications in just a minute. And then we'll look at compatibility with a variety of different operating systems. Let's take a look. Here we have a close-up of the sound card. I'm really digging the Microsoft Windows Sound System logo on the far left. And as we zoom in here, we can see this is powered by an analog device's 1848JP processor. And as we can see right above it, we have the lovely Yamaha OPL3. The back of the card isn't particularly interesting. You can see the different traces there, and we can see this is a Rev B card and the FCC ID over there on the right. Looking at the interfaces, on the far right we have speaker out, followed by two RCA jacks, followed by a line in jack, and finally a microphone in jack. So let's go ahead and get this installed. First I need to take out my Sound Blaster AWE64. You can see that card here, very nice card, I love it and we can put the Windows Sound System card into this nice ISA slot on my Pentium 233 MMX system, which I love dearly. Let's go ahead and fasten this in so that it doesn't go anywhere, especially since we're going to be plugging things in here in just a second. Let's get our speakers plugged in, and I'm also going to plug in my lapel microphone, so let's go ahead and get that plugged in as well. You can see that there as I hold it up for you to see. And we'll go ahead and get that plugged in so that we can do some voice recording with this lovely piece of equipment. Next, we'll go ahead and install the Windows Sound System 2.0 software. It comes on five disks that I have loaded on my GoTech, as you can see here. And when we run the setup program, this is the first thing that we get. Got to watch out for that high output volume. We can go ahead and click continue, and then we can pop through this dialog as well that tells us about DOS applications. And here you will notice in Sound System 2.0 that more than the Windows Sound System card is supported. We can actually use other sound cards as you see in the list. We'll go ahead and do custom hardware configuration. Later on, we may find that this was a mistake, but that's okay. And then from there, we'll acknowledge the dialogues and the drivers installed. Okay, let's go ahead and continue through here. And then we can continue again. And then let's go ahead and do a quick hardware operation check. Let's do a sound check. Well, that didn't work out so well. I had to make a couple of changes in the BIOS to make this work, which basically involved assigning a IRQ and DMA channel to the ISA bus. But while we're here, we might as well click on troubleshooting. And if we go into there, we can see that it says you can check the driver and it could be an interrupt conflict or otherwise, but we'll leave these settings alone. And like I said, I did go into the BIOS to make some changes. Let's go ahead and install the software anyway. We'll use the default folder that it suggests there, that's perfectly fine, and create the directory, why of course. And we'll do a custom installation so we can look at some of the applications that will be installed. So first we'll click on Applications and see there's a Sound Finder, Music Box, Quick Recorder, and Voice Pilot, which will be installed. I also installed the proofreaders, though we won't be looking at those today, but that is an option, and you can install them for Excel, Lotus, or Windows applications. As for libraries, we can see the options there are a sound library and an icon library, which is great. Let's go ahead and install. And of course, we do have to consent to a license agreement here, but we do have the option to exit should we change our minds. So from there, the installation will proceed as I put in the various disks, and before long, it'll be all installed and we are ready to look at the system. We can go ahead and restart Windows. 
And with Windows restarted, we can start to crack open some of the items here. We can look at the README. This is version 2.0 of the software, like we noted. And we can see we have this massive README for all the different things that we need to know. We won't go through that right now. Let's play some sounds. I'll start up the Sound Finder application here, and let's start out by playing an RMI file. Pretty nice. Let's go ahead and try another RMI file on the list here and see what it sounds like. Pretty rich sound. I'm impressed. Now let's go ahead and try a run-of-the-mill WAV file, just a short one here. And after I finished playing that, I realized it was a little loud, so I thought I would go ahead and adjust the volume control. Let's see if that makes any difference. I sure didn't notice a difference, but I guess that is what it is. Okay. So I did try to launch the Music Box application, but I don't have CD Audio configured, so we won't be looking at that. We will, however, launch the Quick Recorder and record a little clip and play it back. Let's have a listen. This is a test. This is a test. Ooh, that was not great. And I can assure you I was using a high quality microphone. It is what it is. We can also have a look at the expanded view of the quick recorder and you can see there's some more options there. We won't explore them, but they are available. We'll also look at the voice pilot and this is a way that we can train the system to obey our every command, or something like that. Let's see how this goes. What I'm going to do is actually create a new profile and train it. So you can see me doing that here. And then I'm going to go through all 36 items that need to be trained so that it can perfectly understand everything that I'm going to tell it as we will see next. Let's give that a try. Open. Exit. Cancel. Maximize. Minimize. Take a note. Restore. Hey, give it some credit. It got some of the commands right. MS-DOS 6.22 compatibility. So it's fair to say that there are reasons that standards are established. And unfortunately, using this card is a lot like trying to put a square peg into a round hole. So looking at the readme, maybe we'll get some hints on what to do. For example, to use AdLib for music output and Sound Blaster for sound effects. However, make sure you choose Sound Blaster and not Sound Blaster Pro and some special guidance for Mickey's ABCs. I guess that was really important and alphabet blocks. Ugh, lots of caveats. And looking at this article here, apparently there were some changes we could make to config sys and auto exec bat to emulate a Sound Blaster card for applications that don't try to auto detect anything else. Looking at this article on the Creeping Network, there is some discussion about the WSS XLAT driver, which is supposed to trap and emulate Sound Blaster. This individual never really got it to work. Neither did I. Let's go ahead and try to run Megapede with loading the driver, and we can see that no Sound Blaster is found. However, for applications like Wolfenstein, we're going to have better luck. So despite not having digitized sound and my absolutely atrocious playing skills, it's fair to say that this didn't sound too terribly bad. However, for this next one, 
you might want to cover your ears because the background music for Lemmings sounds completely distorted on this sound card. So I might have played that one about five seconds too long, and I apologize, but I wanted you to get a feel for it. And it's fair to say that indeed, I think when it comes to the sound settings for the Windows Sound System sound card on Lemmings, we indeed did hit rock bottom. Next, let's have a look at compatibility in Windows 95. So I'm gonna go to the Add New Hardware Wizard, and we will run that and hopefully the card will be detected. And lo and behold, before too long, indeed, it is. There we have it. So let's go ahead and click Finish here, and we can see that the device is found, including Sound Blaster emulation for it, which is great. So we'll go ahead and restart like we always do. So with the drivers installed, we can go and have a look at the Device Manager. And if we click that and expand sound video and game controllers, we'll see two drivers installed. Perfect. So I want to show you something else. We're going to go look at the multimedia tab in the control panel, or icon I should say. And if we look here, we do have audio. However, no MIDI. How peculiar. We should have MIDI. So let's go ahead and go back to the drivers and make one little change. If we go to the Windows Sound System Compatible Driver and go to Resources, we can change this. Notice how there's only one I.O. range right now. If we change to Basic Configuration 1, we will see we now have a second for MIDI. I don't know why this was not the default. However, if we make this change, I think we're going to be in business. So now let's go back to that Multimedia Control Panel icon again and look at the MIDI tab, and indeed we now have MIDI support. Very good, we are now set up. So with that, I thought I would go ahead and try and launch Wolfenstein. However, we got this terrible error message down here in the bottom right, and it took some finagling, but I figured out what to do, and I'll show you how I fixed it. This is probably particular to my Pentium 233MMX system. So we can go to my computer, go to properties, go to the device manager, back to the driver again, and we can expand that, click on it, Go to resources and we're going to make one little change. IRQ 10, we're going to change to IRQ 9. There's just some conflict in the system and that will take care of it for us. So I'll go ahead and launch Wolfenstein. So that was kind of nice. Did you see that we had digitized sound? That was better than MS-DOS. So that's an improvement. Next up, let's have a listen to a WAV and MIDI file under Windows. So we'll head on over to Sounds, since that's an easy enough place to go within the control panel, and we can play the nice Microsoft sound for you. That sounded pretty good to me. Next up, let's play a few seconds of Canyon MIDI. Next up, let's try and launch Megapete again. Let's see how that goes. So we were able to launch Megapede, however there was a problem. It's frozen. I can't particularly blame this on the Windows Sound System card. I did try my Sound Blaster AWE64 in the system and got it to play, but there were some cases where settings on that card also resulted in the screen freezing. Let's take a minute and look at compatibility under Windows 98. So if we go to Device Manager, we can see that it's not installed when we start the system. 
We can then go ahead and do the add new hardware wizard as well, similar to Windows 95. The screens are slightly different as we will expect, but we get to the same objective here. We have to choose that our device is not in that list, and then from there the detection can happen. And there we see our card again. We'll go ahead and get that installed and do a little restart. On restart, the Sound Blaster emulation is found. We can go to the multimedia tab and look at that. They got MIDI right in Windows 98. No changes necessary this time. Let's go ahead and play a WAV file. And let's go ahead and play a few seconds of Canyon MIDI one more time. Regarding Wolfenstein, we had the same problem and the same solution. I'll speed it up here since we've already seen it once, but fair to say making this change fixed the problem. And I thought that this time we would also launch Commander Keen. So there you have it, that's an overview of the Windows Sound System card and accompanying software in around 15 minutes. So what's my thoughts on this card? Well, if I were building a retro system, I would probably choose something that was a little bit more compatible. In all cases, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.